once you've built a couple of the basic loggers, which in general sleep somewhere between 0.5 and 0.6 milliamp, you realize that uh, that much sleep current tends to limit your operating life to somewhere between four to six months. So it's a good idea to think about ways that you could reduce the sleep current to extend the operating life of your logger. And one of my favorite uh, ways to do that is to modify the RTC board. Now this, this involves a little bit of advanced soldering skills, so it's a good idea to wait until you've had a chance to really get good at doing things like pinning the boards before you attempt this. But the basic idea is that we're going to uh, disconnect the VCC pin on this chip, which is actually pin number two right here, and we're going to power the RTC chip only from the battery backup line. And the reason we're going to do that is that this chip has a quirk. The DS3231 draws a, almost a tenth of a milliamp if you power it from this pin. But if you power it from the battery backup pin, that goes down to about 3 microamps. So it's a huge reduction in the amount of power it takes just to keep the RTC going. And I haven't really noticed any difference in the operation of the clock. It still generates alarms just fine. The temperature register doesn't seem to be affected by this modification. And so, as far as I can tell, this is, a, this is, this is doing quite well in all of the loggers that I've applied it to. And the nice thing about modifying this RTC in this way is it doesn't require any extra changes to your code. So I, I've, in the past, what I used to do is I used to hook this VCC pin to a digital pin on the Arduino with a wire. So I would raise this pin and put a wire on it and then power that pin whenever I was doing I2C comms. But I've since discovered that the I2C communications works just fine when it's powered by the pin 3 up here, the, the backup battery pin, uh, even at 400 kilohertz. So even with a faster bus, it doesn't seem to affect the operation at all. So uh, let's just do this mod and then you can take a look at it and see if it's something that you feel like you want to tackle to increase the operating life of your logger. So the hardest part of this modification is lifting that pin because you have to wedge your tweezers in there behind the leg and uh, you know even for me this is a little bit tricky to do and then you apply some heat to the pad just just to that leg and you slowly lever it out and if you do it properly you end up and that, that was done you end up with the ability to lift this leg with your tweezers so right now I can pass my tweezer tip completely under that leg there's no connection between the leg and the board anymore so I'm gonna raise that up a little bit more and instead of attaching that leg to a power pin on the Arduino, we're actually going to ground it out. And I'm going to do that with the leg of a small 104 capacitor. I'm just going to pull that across because this is the ground pin right here. This is the, the negative side of the RTC backup battery. And it's connected via the board to the ground. So this is a common ground. And we're just going to pull this across with this wire here. So first we'll put a little bit of solder on that leg. Again, this is just a bit of flux. Just to make sure that this leg is... I can get a solder join. Okay, you can see my shaky hand. So that's now tin. And I'm going to put some tin on these legs. I like to hold on to these little capacitors when I'm working on them because they can't take much heat. So if it's too hot for my fingers, well, it's too hot. I probably have hurt the capacitor, so I almost always hold these guys while I do this so that I don't uh, accidentally cook them. Or at least if I do cook them, then I know that I've done it. All right. So now I'm going to solder the end of the wire to that leg, but I'm going to put a little bit of heat shrink on there first so that uh, I don't touch down on any of those other pins underneath these guys here. Most of these are non, non-contact pins. They, they're not being used for anything, but there's a couple here that are used. So I'm going to put that across. Right, so it just takes a, a little bit of heat shrink there. I'm just, as I said, I'm just trying to protect 
against touchdowns. Okay. And I'll pull this across. Try and keep this in view for you guys here, but it's a little hard working at this scale and trying to video at the same time. You want just a just a touch of solder on the end of your iron as you bring it together to where those two things, the leg of the chip and the uh, end of the capacitor. This is why you want everything pre-tinned. So there's my join. Okay, let's see if I can zoom in on that for you. Okay, so the VCC leg of the chip and the end of that capacitor leg are now joined. Shuffle this along. Give it a little zap so that it shrinks down. I can keep it out of the way because now I need to join to the end here. Pull that back a little. And the other side of this guy gets connected right to that pin. So I'll give it a little bend here. Occasionally there's some oxide on that old solder on the bottom of that uh, battery connector. So I'll give it a little more flux, just a touch. So now that pin is basically grounding, the VCC pin is grounded now out through this wire. Okay, and if I did this correctly, there's still insulation there, so there's no contact to any of these others, just that pin. And again, it's far enough off the pad, I can pass my whole tweezer right underneath that join. There's no contact there at all. All right, and then the next step is we're going to bring this leg here of the capacitor up to a common join part, but I'm going to do that in a moment. So this leg is going to end up here eventually. So for now, I'll just leave it out of the way because unlike the modifications done to the, uh, the board for the basic build, we're not going to disable this charging circuit. We're still going to get rid of this LED because power wasting LEDs do nothing for the logger. So I'll quickly just lift this this resistor. Okay, get rid of it. Okay, so that effectively disables the indicator LED, but we're not disabling the charging circuit this time. We're actually going to be using that charging circuit to provide power to the backup line, the, the battery backup line, but we can't do that and leave the non-rechargeable CR2032 backup battery connected because then that charging circuit would be driving power through our backup battery. So we have to disconnect this line and some people just cut this trace. Uh, I'm not very good at that. I usually end up slipping with my knife and then you know, cutting something I didn't intend to. So I usually take a pair of clippers and I cut that line at the top of the board up here where it says power. I just dig a little out. And that's that's enough to uh, make sure that I've cut the I've cut that battery backup line which runs up here and along the top down to this third pin. So now that that line's cut I, I've just found that I'm better at doing that, but you can you can just take a knife and uh, cut through this wire right here if you decide that you're that's your preferred method. But right now, what we've done is we've isolated this pin, and then we're going to reconnect it. But we're going to reconnect it through a diode, and it's the same diode. So this is a 1N4148, and that's a 1N4148, and so these guys have a about the same voltage drop. 
there will still be some drop across this resistor in the charging circuit, but basically these things should sort of even out, and that means that um, most of the time when the logger is running, you, you're not drawing power from the backup battery, you're actually drawing power from the main VCC line. So take me a moment here. Well, again, we'll have to tin everything, so I'll just tin the diode. These are just old ones off of eBay, of course. So they're usually a little rougher than they would be if I was buying, you know, new parts. All right. So again, we'll put a little bit of uh, heat shrink tubing over this thing before I start putting it in place, just so that I'm not uh, touching down. So there's a little bit of heat shrink. Probably a million ways to do this modification, but this is just the way I do it. Okay, again, the thing to watch out for is that you've got your diodes oriented properly, so there's the, the black indi line indicator and it's facing the black line indicator, so these diodes are in opposition. Excess. And I still shorten those uh, those pins, even with these things in place, because again, they're still a touchdown hazard. Once we get the boards put together into the sandwich that makes the logger, um, and sometimes I'll even push this, this this pin down a little bit, not too much, because I don't want it to touch down below. But I just want everything to be more or less in place. So there's my my diode. Now this is the line from the backup battery here going across through this diode so there can't be any backflow from the charging circuit. And the last step is to attach that leg of the capacitor. Now that capacitor I added because uh, I found a few references in the data sheet to the memory inside the uh, inside the RTC becoming corrupt because of switch bounce type uh, events when you're plugging the battery in. So th this, this is actually supposed to be here not because of this modification, but because the, the chip itself is susceptible to damage if you don't stabilize you know, and get rid of the switch bounce type problems when you're actually plugging in the RTC backup battery or, or powering it. So the, the, the data sheet actually suggests that you should have the RTC plugged in to power from the VCC line before you change the backup battery or you install one of these capacitors so it's just convenient that it works just great with this modification okay and the last step is just heat up the heat shrink all the way around make sure it's all out of the way don't cook anything Okay, so just to review, we still disconnect the indicator LED because that's functionally useless. We lift the pin of the, the, the VCC line of the DS3231 RTC chip. 
and now we're drawing that to ground. So I used to, uh, as I said in the MDPI paper, I think I, I brought that down to a digital pin and powered it from the Arduino, but I've now found out that that's not even necessary. You can just ground that pin, and I do that on the leg of this capacitor, and I use this capacitor because the data sheet says that even without any of these modifications, you need a decent sized capacitor to protect the memory inside the chip from switch mount pulses when you put the RTC backup battery in. So that, that just helps smooth everything out. And then normally when your logger is plugged in and operating, the power comes in through this charging circuit to the VBAT line, which is commonly connected here. And that powers the chip in VBAT mode, which usually is about three microamps, as opposed to the 0.1 milliamp that you'd be paying as a power penalty if you were powering through the VCC pin. And then if you take this power away, then the backup battery takes over, goes through this 1N4148 diode, and it supplies the, the battery uh, timekeeping power. So the, the last step, of course, is to just uh, code everything and make sure you don't have anything in the way. I'm just going to pull this chip over a little bit more here, just, just to keep it out of the way when we are doing those connections. And I'll code everything with conformal coding. I'm, I take extra care with the conformal coding if I've done this modification because I've added a lot of extra things that could potentially touch down, especially in this area here. So I'm really you know, super careful now with the uh, conformal coding to make sure that nothing is going to touch down, especially when we add the tape and turn it into a sandwich. We've added more things here that could potentially contact each other and we don't want that to happen. So, I guess I take extra care with the conformal coding when I've done this modification. And uh, after, I'm going to do the cooking show trick here because this stuff is still wet. But once the conformal coating is dry, you add that little extra square of tape and then this just goes into the sandwich. And it doesn't change any of the other assembly procedure. It's uh, essentially a self-contained modification, doesn't require any code changes, and doesn't require any other changes to the way you build the loggers. So I just wanted to cover that one. It's a really useful power-saving technique uh, that you can add or not add. It's totally optional for the logger design.